Hey guys, Tony Benson here with Wealth Builders HQ and creator of Patterns in a Flash. I am uh, filling in for Rob. He asked me to cover as he had a conflict, so I told him I'd be happy to. If we haven't met, welcome. Appreciate you coming out and spending a few minutes with me doing the market intelligence report. We'll see if I can try to be as intelligent as Rob because <laughs> he's an awesome trader and an even better coach. Uh, anyway. So we're looking at the SPX. This is the uh, kind of intermediate term trend. If we go back and look a little longer term, oops, let me get that activated. There we go. That is still a pretty solid downtrend in place. We've had this big giant pop. Let me come in a little closer here. As you obviously noticed on Thursday with the CPI news, uh, which to me, I, I mean, I expected that if it came in better, it would pop a little bit. This was a little bit overdone in my opinion. I actually think the bulls overdid it, got too excited um, because CPI is still really high. Yeah, it came in a little bit better than expected. It came in a little bit cooler than it, you know, it was before. But things are still really, really bad in the overall economy. The macro picture does not look good. Facebook just announced 11,000 layoffs. Redfin's cutting 13% of their staff. Um, other tech companies have announced layoffs. I know in the mortgage industry, there's already a big bunch of layoffs. I've got friends in there. Um, so the layoffs are starting to come in. And that's when things start to get worse. And if you pay attention to the overall market, typically at the beginning of recessions, when you go back and look historically, right before the recession hits is when unemployment is at its low. Unemployment almost always bottoms out right before the recession starts to kick in. And we did have a recession in the first two quarters of this year. And then the last quarter, we had a little bit of growth. It was anemic, wasn't that great. But uh, we are most likely going to turn back into a recession this next year. Fourth quarter, maybe it's hard to say what it's going to be like. Uh, from a GDP perspective, but uh, it's not the big picture is not looking good. You know, you got what's going on with Bitcoin that just started last week. It just started to crater. FTX filed for bankruptcy on Friday. Um, the founder of that is sounds like I just saw something <laughs> earlier today that he's jetting off to Argentina from the Bahamas. Um, it sounds like he's fleeing is what it sounds like. Um, who knows? You know what he may or may not have done. Um, I know he you know he pledged a whole bunch of political donations. He gave a bunch of money politically when his company's on fire and going down in flames. So it just seems really, really odd. Um, and that's the concern with Bitcoin. It's an unregulated industry and uh, it's kind of the wild west essentially. So nobody knows what's gonna happen with that. That could have a major drag on the market too. If the, the Bitcoin continues to crumble and continues to implode, then uh, that could have a, a dramatic effect on the overall market. So that's one major concern. There's not a whole lot of big news coming out this next week for the SPX. Um, so I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised to see this week, a little bit of a, a continued bullish rally. So what I would like to see, uh, but I'm a little biased because I am on the bear side. Um, so these last two days were not fun for me. I would like to see it pull back to 39. I'd like to see it just crater myself, but <laughs> that's my bias. What I think will happen is this thing will probably stall out a little bit, uh, because these runs, especially with this massive pop, they usually don't keep going forever. They pull back. And actually, it would be healthy for it to pull back. Kind of like here, right? You got this four-day move. And, well, I mean, we had a one big drop and it didn't really pull back. It just continued to tank. Um, but I guess this is probably a better example here is we had a breakout, right? It's, actually, this is pretty similar. We had a down day recognizing that $3,900 resistance. And then the next day, it popped through it and rallied for three days, but then it pulled back. So this is what I would expect to have happen this next week is for it to have a pullback. We may have one more day of the upside and then a pullback back to this level and then possibly a launch like this. So this is actually interesting. I didn't see that earlier, but this is a very similar look to what we have going right now. So this is what I would be expecting. But who knows, right? Bitcoin, if it, like I said, if it crumbles, it could completely change things. If some kind of news comes out we don't expect, if some other big name comes out and announces massive layoffs, or there's still some earnings coming in, I think the bulk of the big names are out, but there may be some more earnings coming this week that you know could have an impact, but may, who knows, right? It's always hard to tell. It's always 50-50, hence the reason that we use stops and make sure that we are um, being smart about trade, right? So there's a long-term picture if we go to monthly, there is, uh, if we're looking just since the bottom in 2009, the SPX, this bear trend could easily come down to, uh, well, that will probably, by the time it gets down here, probably be up here about that 3,300 level. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen in the next six months to a year. But let me freak you all out really big time. <laughs> Look, if you know how to trade, that's the beauty of trading. We can trade upside or downside. Okay, in this one, I've showed this a bunch of times to a lot of people and some people freak out. They're like, oh my gosh. 
Well, if you know how to trade down, then who cares, right? It doesn't matter. Buy puts, short the stock, do something to make sure that if you have a portfolio of stocks, then do something to protect the downside. Learn to write calls because that way, if things do continue to fall over the next year or two and they stay bearish, then you can at least cash flow the stock. Even though you may be losing value in the asset, at least you're collecting something, right? This is my big term, this is my big picture perspective, okay? This is the entire history of the SPX. This is your yearly candles, right? So yearly chart. You can see here the 29 crash, right? It started in 28, peaked out in 29, and for four years, it basically fell. And I believe this number was 80 or 85 was the peak, and it dropped all the way to like four. It lost like 85 or 90% of its value in four years. But you can also see that long-term trend that's been in place that in 2009, it came down and tapped it. So in 2009, after the big housing implosion, it recognized and it found this trend line again, which you can see, I mean, it hit it in, what's that, 33? And then here sometime in the 40s, it looks like, again in the 40s. And then in the 60s, it danced along that line for about a decade. And then the bullish run accelerated, and this is the 90s, right? This is what, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, or 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, yeah. So these are the 90s, the late 90s, when the market just roared, and then you have the dot-com bubble, you got the 2008, 2009 housing crash. And after that, we came back and found that level. <clears throat> so if we have a crash that's as bad as 2008, then I would expect that we're likely to come back down to this trend line. And if it is worse than that, if things turn out worse than the 08 crash, which I think there's a possibility that that could happen because we have bubbles in stocks. You had a bubble in real estate. That's starting to pop. Stocks have started to pop. Uh, bonds were in a bubble. Commodities were in a bubble. I mean, pretty much all major asset classes were in a bubble. Crypto, which I don't really consider an asset class, but some people do, that was in a bubble. I mean, you had bubbles in pretty much everything, which is what happens when you print trillions of dollars and just give it out to people. So there's bubbles in pretty much every area of the economy and they're all starting to pop. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this be just as bad, if not worse, than 2008 or 2009. Possibly even, I mean, we could be heading into a depression. I don't know. We never know. Things change, right? Politics could change. Geopolitical reasons, things could change. The world's on fire. It's not on fire yet, but I think it's headed that direction. I know that's a scary outlook and a lot, freaks a lot of people out, but here's the beauty, okay? I can't control the overall economy. I've been saying this a lot lately too. I can't control the overall economy and what's going on around me. I can't control whether the larger economy does any good. All I can control is my economy. And the way that I control my economy and make my economy grow is by being realistically about the overall economy. If I stick my head in the sand and pretend that this isn't real, then I'm in trouble. I can't do anything to grow my personal economy. But if I know that this is a possibility and we could be heading into a depression, then I can prepare in however ways you feel necessary. And then you can learn to trade. And if you trade the downside, this year has been a spectacular year. Okay, like 150 to 200% so far, year kind of year. If you can make 200% on a bearish move, you're gonna be just fine. Okay, so... Don't fret, learn to trade the downside, learn to watch for, you know, there's not a really clear signal here. This is what's hard. We haven't had any real clear bearish signals at these trends. A lot of times you'll get, you know, a hesitation there. Kind of like this one right here. This is what I look for. This is not necessarily normal. It kind of, it can be, even though it's happened twice, but this is more of what we would look for. In fact, this was a fun ride, right? Because I saw this, right? We had the big move to the downside over about two months. We had this little pop. We came back up to that resistance of 41 and it danced here for several days. And right there during that period is when I started to load up. I started to nibble on some a little bit here. I saw this. I was like, eh, I didn't stop out of it. But then it popped back below it. I went, you know, we're about possibly about to drop. I had stops right here. We're really close to it. And boom, it tanked. That was a fun few days, about a week, week and a half. This was not so fun because I gave back some of what I got there. But I captured most of it, right? And I should have realistically seen this little double bottom and caught the top. But, you know, it is what it is. I have caught some of this to the upside, but uh, it's always a learning experience, right? It's always challenging to figure out what's next. That's the beauty, that's the fun of, of trading. That's one of the reasons I love it. It is always super challenging to try to figure out what to do and how to manage things and how, how to manage your emotions mainly. So so I will call it a day there. Did we look at the 200? There's what I think is gonna happen with the SPX. This week, I think we, if we continue to run, we'll probably hit the 200, possibly come to that downtrend line about 40, 81. And uh, if we do that quickly, it'll probably turn over and drop like it did here is what I'm expecting. Um, if we pull back here and settle in, then we may have a decent, a decent little move coming from a bull side. We'll have to wait and see and see how the market reacts and then make our decisions based on what it does and take it from there. So thanks for all 
putting up with me for this week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care. God bless. Folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the training. Now, if you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and go ahead and hit the subscribe button right over here and hit the bell to keep up with all the latest trading content. And oh, did you know that we have a podcast? Supercharge your trading education with the Stock Market Millionaire, which you can find in the description down below. And while you're there, you can also find other amazing free trading resources that I've put together just for you.